Hi folks, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. Today my post is about what's a hiatal hernia. We hear the word hiatal hernia often, and especially when you come into the gastroenterology office, we tend to use it a lot. A hiatal hernia is a, a condition where a portion of the belly enters into the chest. The chest is up here, the abdomen or belly is down here, and there's a layer of muscle between both called the diaphragm. You see it on that graphic that uh, I have up on the screen where you see the esophagus, which is a tube that's going down here. And right here is the diaphragm and below that is the stomach and the stomach contents, which can include colon, spleen and liver in addition to the actual stomach. The significance of this is that the majority of the time it increases the uh, reflux because right at the junction there's a flap and the flap holds it tight and if the flap becomes bigger that's when this uh, the abdominal contents or the uh, stomach itself can slide up and that can cause uh, uh, more acid reflux very rarely it can cause other symptoms there's four types of uh, hernia one is a sliding hernia the other one is a rolling hernia there's a paraesophageal hernia and type 4 where it's an upside down stomach in type 1, a portion of the stomach can get pushed up into the chest. In type 2, there's a portion of the stomach that sits like this, adjacent to the diaphragm, adjacent to the esophagus, and that portion comes up. And in a true paraesophageal uh, uh, hernia, the esophagus and the stomach and cardia, all of those can come up. So in other words, it's a relative degree of how much stomach gets into the chest. The fourth one is a little bit different that the entire stomach and sometimes other organs etc can get in and sometimes what happens with this is that it then causes symptoms like chest discomfort, chronic cough and sometimes the insides of it bleed and that's called Cameron ulcers, C-A-M-E-R-O-N ulcers. But these are unusual. The majority of the time when you, we say hiatal hernia, all it does is cause reflux. In terms of treatment, the majority of the hernias can be treated medically or left alone from a surgical standpoint. The treatment is usually treatment of reflux. We treat with acid medicines to see if the reflux and regurgitation can get better. However, indications for surgery could be if there's a lot more symptoms than can be controlled medically, if the size is big and causes compression of the lung, or sometimes you get sudden attacks of pain which may indicate that the hernia is twisting on itself. Uh, it, it is uh, surgery, it, that is an indication. There's two forms of surgery. One is called Nissen's fundoplication and essentially what they do is pull the stomach down and take and wrap it around down there to prevent it from coming. The difference between a Nissen and a toupee is that it's not a full wrap in a toupee fundoplication. So I have an example of what happens with the stomach on the fund on the uh, fundoplication surgery in summary hiatal hernias are not uncommon but don't necessarily always cause problems the big problem they can cause is reflux sometimes they cause pressure like symptoms if they are big sometimes they can cause inside bleeding but all of these can be managed medically very rarely they need surgery to fix it and surgery is those two forms that i talked about Thank you for joining me today. I wish you all uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. The vaccine is out now and uh, the vaccination campaign is going well. I plan on taking it when it's my turn and I encourage you to think about that. For the next two weeks, because of the holidays, there won't be posts and we'll resume week of January 4th. Thank you all for, for your comments and encouragement.